Felicia. Huh. <laughs> Who's Felicia? <laughs> Who's Felicia? That means ugly. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's September 22nd. Good morning, Chevelle. Morning. September 27th. It's officially fall. Apparently today is the first day of fall. Already. So, ready, get set, go. What are you looking at, Joe? Oh, yeah, there. Uh, well, Joseph here is just... Mm. I bookmarked your book, your, your Bible yesterday. Okay, you want to read with me? You found it there? Okay, here we go. Gospel for the day is from St. Luke, chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. It's a very short gospel, okay? but it's a gospel that's loaded with, uh, with meaning. Okay, Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another. Right? This is what... Our Lord did in his public life. He was going from one place to the other, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa. Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. That's it. Very short gospel. Okay? Uh, but what, what do you think is significant about this gospel reading today? What, do you, what catches your attention? Yeah, huh? What? The women. The women. What about women, Jacob? Huh? What is that? <laughs> What's that? <clears throat> What's that, Joseph? What's all the buzz there? What about the women? What do you say, brother? The women are pretty. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't quite describe them. <laughs> it doesn't quite describe whether they were pretty or not. But uh, uh, but I suppose they they must be pretty. Huh? Uh, okay. What, what about what about these women? Why did that Why did that catch your attention? You haven't heard about them before, hey, Jacob. You haven't heard about them before. Well, and that is true. It's very seldom that you hear about women in the Gospels, and especially seldom. Uh, or I need to recall, maybe this might be the only passage in the gospel where you hear about women accompanying Jesus in his public ministry. Huh? What's that, Jana? Right? This might be the only, the only um, uh, gospel um, uh, part where you find women accompanying Jesus in his journeys, in his travels, in his public ministry. Right? And there is very little said about, oh, no, the other one was during his uh, burial. Huh? During his burial, right? When the women were also there to, uh, to attend to his body and prepare his body for burial. Right? Good. And it was also Mary Magdalene who was prominent there, even at the resurrection. Okay? So, well, uh, this, this um, gospel, very short as it is, helps us understand the role of women in the church. I know that uh, you might be a little too young to appreciate this and maybe, maybe uh, unaware of the fact that um, there is a very intense controversy surrounding women <clears throat> and women in the church and the role of women in the church. Okay, um, you must have heard about some uh, women lobbying to be ordained priests hmm? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> joseph is shocked but never... <laughs> well because uh yeah as i said you might be a little too young or uh, unaware that such things are happening around us right but it's there's it's it's important for us to understand that these things are happening 
there are some some people, some women, some women groups who uh, have been lobbying uh, the church for years um, um, for women to be ordained priests. Yeah, so they want they want uh, to participate in the uh, in the um, priestly uh, ministry, okay, uh, the ministerial priesthood that the priests are ordained to do. Okay, well, but uh, for your understanding, for your appreciation, uh, that is not that is not in keeping with what the church teaches us about uh, priests and about who can be ordained priests, okay? Oh, hi, Father Willie. <laughs> Speaking of priests, I got Father Willie Ong, uh, a very good friend from uh, the Philippines, listening uh, to this broadcast now. Uh, so, Father Willie, you have to tell me if I'm saying something wrong about priests, okay? But uh, <laughs> I hope not. Uh, well, in the first place, we don't have all the time in the world or this morning to be commenting about this. But the, the whole gospel has to do with the role of women. So we have to un understand that women have a very, very special role in the church, okay? in the ministry of the church. And, uh, you know, everybody has a, has a role to play in the church of Jesus Christ. Okay? In the first place, we have to understand that the church... When we speak of the church, it's not only the uh, the, the physical um, building that we uh, we occupy when we uh, worship God at Mass. That is not what church really means. Okay, the church means what, Joe? The church is a the congregation of people that. Okay, Joe. Very good. That was from the Catechism, right? So, definition of the church. Can we can we say it again? The the church is the congregation, the congregation of, people of people who profess, who profess the, faith the, Christ, the faith of Christ and partake, and partake of, the same of the same sacraments and are, and are governed under one head. Under one head. head. Who is the Pope, right? So that's the definition of the church. So it encompasses everybody, men and women, young and old, um, ministerial priests, and those who who are generally part of the mystical body of Christ, right? Who also enjoy a a, uh, a, a the priesthood of Jesus Christ, but not in the ministerial fashion that the ordained priests do okay so all of us by virtue of our baptism are part of this church the community of God the community of the children of God okay, who compose the mystical body of Jesus Christ now each and every one of us have roles to play have roles to play in this church and a few a few, very few, in fact, who have been chosen by God specifically to minister to us by giving, uh, making the sacraments available to us. They are the ones we call priests. Right? They are the priests who administer the sacraments and make it available for us uh, to receive so that we may receive the grace of, of Jesus Christ through these channels that, the, that he himself, Jesus Christ himself, has established uh, to be the means by which we receive the graces that he gives us in the church. Okay? The sacraments that were inaugurated when? During the crucifixion, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, right? And when his death and crucifixion on the cross. Very good, Joe. So, now, now the women, the women, okay. Well, women have a special role. Women are a, are a special element in the church. Chevelle, don't tap the, the, the egg on the plate because it's uh, causing some distraction. You know what? A faster way, crack it on your head. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so um, I think the, the, the problem stems primarily from uh, women not appreciating 
their role in in the big church in the in the in the big uh, uh, scope the, the general scope and dimension of the entire church which by the way by the way begins from the home okay? this church that we're talking about the community of people who worship God and who share in the same sacraments this church has its parts and the, the, the most basic unit of that church is what we call the domestic church, the church of the home, the, the church of the community of God that is based on the home. And in this home, in this home, guess who plays one of the most prominent roles? You. Oh. <laughs> you, <laughs> Jana, yeah, the women, right? Our Jana, our Mia, our Sophia, our Chevelle, of course, our mommy, right? The women are the boss of the home, right? <laughs> the women are the ones who... <laughs> Chevelle is sticking out her tongue on the boys now. Okay? The women play a very, very important, prominent role in this domestic church, right? In the domestic church, and we don't need to uh, uh, elaborate, right? You all know what I mean when we say the women uh, play a very, very important role in this domestic church. And guess what? That feminine role of women that begins from the domestic church gets, gets expanded in the bigger church in many ways, right? Women have played a very important role in, in education, you know, in the ministry of the sick, in uh, even bringing uh, uh, the, the physical Eucharist to hospitals, uh, helping uh, uh, decorate the church, helping clean the church, helping, you know, helping with priests in, in the way that they, uh, they, they uh, conduct their affairs every day, right? Uh, in the offices of the parish, there's so many levels, so many ways by which women have played uh, very, very important roles in carrying out the uh, the apostolate, the ministry of Jesus Christ in the world, right? Just look at our lady. Our lady is, of course, the, the most uh, important example that the women of the world have to emulate. If, if really women uh, could be ordained priests, guess who was the most perfect candidate for uh, the ordination of a woman? See? No other than our Blessed Mother, but Jesus decided, no, she will have a, a different role, right? She will be the mother of the priests, see? In the same manner that all the other women are mothers of our uh, priests in the church. And, and, uh, and uh, all these other women that were accompanying Jesus, if, if really there was any uh, intention on the part of Jesus Christ to ordain priests, she, he would have ordained all of these women who were already accompanying him, who were already with him uh, doing his work. But no, he had a different intention for them. And that is really a consequence of nature, right? Of nature. The very natural inclination of women in this world is, is such that they have a very special role from, from uh, conception, from the, the conception of, uh, of the future members of this church to their upbringing, to their nurturing, to their uh, education, and uh, all throughout uh, the time when uh, they are about ready to give up these very children that they engendered in the world uh, to Jesus Christ. Right? So these women have a very important role. And, and well, we men, we have to appreciate the, 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 these women and their role in the church, from, the, from their roles in our domestic church at home, to the outside world. And women have to begin to uh, try to appreciate their own role and make the best of it. Instead of uh, envying what men do, right? women have to stand up on their own and appreciate their role in the church. And we have plenty of examples of this. Uh, uh, the most recent uh, example perhaps we could, uh, we could um, um, give here is... Uh, uh, Saint uh, Teresa uh, of Calcutta, see, see, Mother Teresa, she was recently um, 
um, named uh, one of the latest saints of the Catholic Church. Well, look at how she changed the world, right? Look at the influence of Mother Teresa in the world, not only in India, but in the rest of the world, okay? She has influenced many a, a policy, uh, even, uh, of, um, even of uh, political organizations, see? even of political bodies, uh, because of the kind of influence that she has had in the world. Okay? So today, folks, today, let us, uh, let us keep in mind the value that women, the women in our families, the women in our lives have in this world. And today is a very good opportunity okay? as part of Catholic best practices. Today is a very good opportunity for us to be grateful to the women in our lives, to the women in our families. Let us thank them. There you go, Joe. Congratulate your sister and thank your sister for preparing your breakfast, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, you helped. That's right. Okay? This is a good day for us to kiss our mothers, to kiss our sisters, to thank everybody, all the women in our family who facilitate the work of our apostolate, who facilitate the work of priests, right? Let us thank them. And you know also, this is a very good day. Okay? Part of Catholic best practices. This is a very good day for us to pray for the victims of abortion. Um, sometimes these women who, uh, who uh, commit abortion are confused about their roles. Not only as women uh, in their families, but uh, as, as uh, um, individuals and as mothers. Let us remember them as we do, you know, every day, every day, I and my kids after mass, we go pass by the abortion clinic, the abortion clinic here in, in our own town. Okay? And we pray, uh, we pray the memorare. Okay? Before we used to pray uh, decades of the rosary when, when we had the, the luxury of time, we would stop by and really pray decades of the rosary there. Uh, now the school, school year began, it's a little bit tighter but we have substituted the decades of the rosary with a memorare. And the memorare is a very powerful prayer uh, uh, to Our Lady. So we ask Our Lady every day, right there at the doors of the abortion clinic, we pass by there and ask Our Lady, uh, implore Our Lady for these women that they may be enlightened, and their husbands too, and their men in their lives to be enlightened about the evils of abortion. And we pray for the conversion of these women and for the salvation of the little babies that they have aborted. So today, let us make it a day for the women in our lives. Let us pray for them. Pray for them that they be strong, that they be good mothers, that they be um, uh, uh, influential in their own little environments, the domestic church, and in the world around them. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh-oh, well, I got some... <laughs> Alicia. What's that face? <laughs> okay, have a good weekend, everybody. It's going to be a very busy weekend for us in the Kliatchko household. But have a good weekend. I hope you enjoy yourselves. I'll see you on Monday, God willing. Bye-bye. Bye! 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 Bye!